This is Matt Morgan. I'm an application engineer at Go Engineer. In this video, I'm going to highlight SOLIDWORKS Costing, which is part of SOLIDWORKS Professional and Premium. I'm going to be showing an example from one of the SOLIDWORKS tutorials named SOLIDWORKS Costing for Machine Parts, where I'll evaluate costs and effects of design changes. We'll look at setup costs, markups and discounts, and we'll try different materials. This tutorial covers library features and overriding costs as well. Then finally, we'll take a look at the reporting that costing can generate easily. Before I get started, I'd like to explain how it works. SOLIDWORKS Costing was developed by a company named Geometric, who also developed CAMWORKS for programming CNC machines. Because they have tools to automatically recognize shapes that can be cut on a 2.5 axis CNC machine, they can also use their feature recognition functionality for SOLIDWORKS tools like FeatureWorks and SOLIDWORKS Costing. Uh, SOLIDWORKS Costing works on parts that can be machined on 2.5 axis CNC mill and lathe, as well as sheet metal features. In SOLIDWORKS 2013, Costing now works with multi-body sheet metal parts as well as parts containing features that would require both turning and milling operations. Let's take a look at a machine part example. So I'll be using the example from the SOLIDWORKS tutorial. So I have this part open. Uh, the first thing that we'd want to do to use Costing is to turn it on on your Evaluate tab. So if you just click on Evaluate, you'll find Costing over here on the side. Uh, if you're using a smaller resolution, it might be off the screen, you have to expand the, the command manager. So we turn on costing and it adds a little panel here on the right. Turn on a put the push pin so it just stays open all the time and what we'll see is a few different things. Um, in the tutorial it walks you through the steps of going into your options, going into file locations and changing your costing template and adding a path to where the tutorials are. Uh, this gives us a template that includes some of the CNC operations which you would probably have to add manually uh, at your shop. Uh, also, uh, any of these templates that you get with uh, SOLIDWORKS will require you to edit them to make it specific to your costs that either your shop uses or uh, the shop that you uh, use to, to manufacture your parts. So if I just open a template, uh, there are different templates for sheet metal versus machine parts. So this is going to be a machine tutorial, this is going to be a machine template. So you have basic general costs, what your uh, hourly rates are, and you can change each of these things however you need to fit your uh, standards. This is going to be a metric standard. Uh, you can set up your stock material costs, so this would be all the materials that you would use, uh, what types of stock you want to allow, plate and blocks. Um, there's lots of different kinds of things in here. This one's mainly for machine parts, so uh, this is what you this is what you get. Um, under machine, you can specify your machine. You have mill and drill. Uh, turn is also an option in here, uh, but that would require some different machines, but you can add some different machines in here. Uh, then you can go to cuts. This is going to be under plate stock. Uh, the plate will automatically use water jet plasma or laser, uh, and here's all the different uh, uh, the materials that we've put in here as far as well as the machines that would that would be used to cut them, uh, what the thickness options are, and what the cost per cut length would be. Then we go down into mill. We have milling operations including the different types of uh, uh, bits that are used, different cutting tools. So we have different finishing roughing tools and you can use this uh, these pictures to help you define what each of these different numbers would be. Uh, this one has uh, several different material types steels and uh, uh, mainly plain carbon steel, AISA 3 or 4, there's just a few examples so you would go through and add some of your own materials and and uh, what the the cost of these different uh, cutting tools would be on that material. And then we have drills, turning operations, this one isn't really designed for turning operations so it doesn't have any of those tools yet but uh, you can see you would enter them in a similar fashion to mill. Uh, library features, you can set up some of your costs based on your library features in SOLIDWORKS. Remember your library features are here so you can say whenever you use this library feature it costs this much to use that. And this one just has the setup for a fluid power port which is a feature that is used in here. And then you can add custom features. They can be painting, anodizing, galvanizing, all kinds of different things. Uh, it could be inspection, could be anything that you have to do uh, that would increase the cost of your parts and you can determine the cost of each of those things. So you would want to set up that template to be uh, however your shop uses it, whatever the cost your shop would would uh, use for those materials. 
Um, if I look at SolidWorks, there's a couple of different features that are suppressed. Uh, that the library feature we'll talk about a little bit later. Um, but basically, what costing does is gives the gives us the list of things that are available in our template editor. So whatever we put in our template, we have some materials here, some different types of materials. Um, if we look at uh, AISI 304, the cost goes up significantly. You can take a look at the different costs. Um, we're going to use plain carbon steel. Uh, the tutorial does go through changing a few of those. I'm just going to leave it at plain carbon steel uh, from here on. Um, you have the, the stock type, whether it's a plate or a block. Um, if you switch it to a plate, then it uses the uh, uh, plate options and it would use a water jet or laser or a, a plasma cutter. And you can see that the greatest plate thickness that we've specified is, is 25 and we don't have anything bigger than 25 but our model is actually 50 millimeters so it gives us a little warning that that won't really work so we're going to use a block and so with the block we get a price of 47.36 and if you look at costing over here on the left we can see the setup operations, the mill operations, hole operations uh, the slot as a library feature so it's being used um, it does give us three setup operations um, one for the slot and then the pocket and holes are in another and then the this hole right here on the side would require a separate operation but the slot and the pocket and holes could actually be done in the same setup operation so we can just drag that in and uh, you can see the cost decreases just a, a little bit by uh, not requiring another setup to be done for the slot. You can add setup costs too if you'd like to um, you can say let's add a, a drill setup cost, let's add a mill setup cost, and so it adds to that cost. And if you scroll down here on the right, you can see that it does take advantage of a number of parts versus lot size. So uh, the lot size is basically just saying that I'm going to set this part, the CNC machine up, and run 100 parts on it in that setup. So it divides the setup costs over. Uh, the lot size and uh, so even if I made 200 parts the lot the price would stay the same because the lot size is 100 but if I increase my lot size to 200 and the number of parts was 200 then my lot size would uh, or then my part would uh, decrease in cost but for example if I just make one part then the lot size goes to one you can see it increases because all the setup costs go into the one part instead of being divided over a hundred different parts So we'll set this back to 100 on both the, the lot size and the total number of parts. Um, once we get kind of our, our baseline set up to where we uh, like it, we can lock it too, and that will kind of set our baseline and capture some images for reporting, which we'll, which we'll take a look at later. Uh, back over here on the left, we do have uh, different mill operations. Um, as long as your template has those operations, then we can add an operation like a finishing operation. Uh, right now it has the flat end mill currently set to 6 millimeter cutting tool. Um, let's make the the finishing tool kind of match the radius of this so we have a 3 millimeter uh, radius so we'll go to this flat end mill and make sure that it also does a 3 millimeter radius so that will change the cost a little bit by finishing that and actually getting the radius to match the size of our geometry. We have all of our whole operations, custom operations we'll add in just a second, and our straight slot. So the hole shows the drill and the tapping operations. You can see the cost of each thing uh, as well. Um, if we now go through making some design changes, um, let's say we get rid of the slot, then we can just click to update and we see the cost change by removing the slot. It's still more expensive than our baseline, but uh, our baseline didn't have uh, the finishing operation. And we can also add other library features. So I'm going to unsuppress this fluid power port. And uh, the fluid power port gets recognized as a library feature. And uh, as soon as we update it, so now it shows the library feature which had the slot in there before and now it has the fluid power port. Um, that does have to be included in your template so 
if we look at the template editor, library features have the fluid power port and that straight slot, so we know what the cost of each of those features are. Um, we can do things like override costs if we wanted to say, well, this one is going to cost more. We can set that to five instead of four. Uh, it will show in a, it'll be italicized. So any of them that are that have italics in there, when the name of it is tal italicized, it will be uh, an overrided, overwritten uh, value. Uh, we can change the shop rate. We can add markups or discounts. If we wanted to say, hey, uh, we promised the customer a 10% discount, we can say minus 10% of total cost. Have the price drop down based on a 10% discount. Uh, a lot of things that you can do in here. Um, we can also add custom operations. We I kind of mentioned the custom operations here. If we hit the feature, I mean, uh, sorry, right below the feature manager, there's the add custom operations. And uh, this can be whatever you put in your template, but you can include all kinds of different custom operations. Um, these ones are kind of going to be based on the, the size of the model. So uh, if we look at painting, it can say we have to paint all faces or we only have to paint selected faces. So it's going to base the cost of painting based on the area that the paint needs to cover. So I can say let's paint all faces and we can see the cost change. Now I want to save a report, so I'm going to click the button down here on the right to create a report of all the information that, we, that costing has just gathered. So it saves screen captures of uh, the baseline and the current state. Even if I change the shape of it, it would show the baseline uh, box. You can kind of see the box around it. Uh, oh, I did forget one thing. Uh, the top of this needs to be uh, a finer tolerance. It can't just be based on the original block, so we want to make the block just a half a millimeter taller. So it's going to add another feature to remove the geometry from the uh, the top. So there's going to be a top face feature, so that'll add to the cost a little bit. Um, but anyway, since I forgot that, I'll just look at the report without it. But here's all the where all that cost came from. Uh, looking at the baseline first, the, the breakdown of all the the costs, each milling feature, whole feature, finishing operation, all that kind of stuff. And then the baseline settings are down here, uh, showing that we increase the cost 21%, and uh, you can start looking at the different features and, and get an idea of why, and what the cost of the baseline feature was. So it's a good way to compare uh, your designs. And this allows you to uh, either find out what the cost will be if you're going to send this to a shop, or uh, you can also find out what changes uh, what what your design changes, how they will affect the cost. Uh, so you can design based on cost, or uh, you can use SolidWorks costing to, to quickly create quotes and uh, have them be fairly reasonable. If you go through all these different, uh, all the template items and make sure that everything that you have, uh, that you can attribute a cost to is, is in your template, uh, then SolidWorks costing will do a great job in uh, uh, estimating that cost for you, allowing you to create quotes quickly. So instead of uh, having to really analyze and figure out what that cost would be in hours or sometimes days, you know, you can get that done in, in minutes. So, uh, again, my name is Matt Morgan. Uh, I'm an application engineer with GoEngineer, and I hope you've enjoyed this uh, lesson on costing. Uh, feel free to go through the tutorial and uh, learn some of the things that I've shown you today. And uh, thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.